Hi, my name is Leah Ferris, and I'm going to analyze the industry for Raleigh mountain bikes. Um, I think it is an oligopoly, and I will show you why I think that. Um, I am choosing Raleigh mountain bikes to analyze because I have recently gotten into mountain biking, and I have loved it. Um, I've really been enjoying it, having a blast being outside. And um, my fiance recently bought a Raleigh mountain bike. We found that it was an extremely good product for a relatively inexpensive price, especially when compared to other bikes of its caliber. Caliber. So first I'm going to go into industry characteristics. So the mountain biking industry, we have a few relatively dominant firms. The um, product is standardized, so it's not like there is much differentiation between mountain bikes. Um, there is limited control over price because of the price of components and because um, of the competition in the industry. There are extensive barriers to entry because again of the price of products and equipment to build mountain bikes and materials uh, as and the patents are also a cost to starting up in this industry. The non-price competition is going to be mostly in advertising and in product differentiation. Although these aren't extremely differentiated products, there is going to be some difference in design, there's going to be color differences and stuff like that. So that's going to be most of the non-price competition. So Another thing that sets this industry as an oligopoly is that the top four firms um, equal over 40% of the industry. So we have Trek, Giant, Specialized, and Redline um, are yeah a good deal over 40%, so that just further confirms that this is an oligopoly. And you can see Raleigh is actually in the fifth place, not by far. Um, the event that I'm going to analyze today that has been having an impact on the industry for um, mountain bikes and on Raleigh mountain bikes in particular is an increase in demand. So, especially for Raleigh mountain bikes. Raleigh is less expensive for the same quality of product, which is why there's going to be an increase in demand for Raleigh mountain bikes, and there has been. Um, so, like I said, this will cause more demand, and at first, this will be good for Raleigh, but as the other firms catch on, they will adjust and lower their prices. This will cause Raleigh to have a lower profit overall because they will still have the marginal costs and the average total costs, but their revenue will not be as high. So the determinant here is price of related goods because we're looking at the other firms in this industry and their competition. So here's the demand curve at first. When Raleigh starts getting more popular, they start being have more of a market for them, people are buying them, the demand curve is sliding to the right. But here in this next graph, um, which is the kinked demand curve, we, we can see how if Raleigh had, to the left of the curve, we can see how if Raleigh had um, increased their prices, the other firms would not have followed suit. So Raleigh would have had high prices, everyone else would have kept the same. But as Raleigh lowered its prices, the other firms are going to catch on in the long run, and Raleigh's um, market shares are not going to go up, and their marginal revenue is going to decrease. So that is why it is not necessarily beneficial in the long run for Raleigh mountain bikes. So overall, just to summarize, we have an oligopoly here for the before stated reasons, and the event that is affecting it and will affect it is we have increased demand for Raleigh, but over time it will steady. Here's my works cited showing the different uh, sites that I got my information from as well as the graphs. And then here's a picture for some authenticity. That's me and my fiance on top of a and here's us after one of our long bike rides. Thank you for watching.